Hello, uh, let's continue with another topic, which is events and remote events. I think you're going to be using those very frequently. Therefore, let's cover it today. I'm going to start with empty project. Let's install the Rojo. Let's install the dependencies. And let's compile the project. Enable Rojo and connect to Studio. So let's take a look at the bindable events first. It's going to be on the server. First, let's create the bindable event. This instance. We doing it like in regular Roblox, but instead of writing new at the end, we're going to write new before we create the instance, like the class. It's just a reminder. And we're going to create a bindable event. First thing, it's like in normal Roblox, we can connect to event. Let's use, in this case, a arrow function. We can, of course, use like a normal function, but I will not recommend it since it's like more wordy of writing like this. We can just write equals and bigger than, right? So let's just print so that it got fired, this event, and we're going to fire it. But just in case, check whether it's connected. Okay, it's connected. So let's start. And we get the signal that it's fired. We can, of course, connect not only the arrow functions, we can connect the normal functions. As an example, it's going to be the function on event. We're just going to create it separately and we're going just to connect it like this directly. And we're going to here print fired. Let's test. Fired. Perfect. Let's cover another point. For example, you created a class that is responsible for something. Let's put class event handler. That is going to have the function on fired, which is going to be fired. Let's actually rename it to on event. So we have in a class and we're going to have an instance of it, event handler. And if you're going to try to connect it immediately like this, you're going to be greeted with an error in the console. That means that we are not able to use the functions directly from the class. We have to create a wrapper for them. That means we have to wrap it in arrow function or normal function, whatever you would prefer. And we have to call it as well, like this. So let's test it. Fired as well works. This is a little bit redundant, I think, since you will be uh, usually connecting only arrow functions. But there could be a case like this, and we covered it. All right, we can pass, of course, the arguments here. Let's say that we're going to pass one and a as a string. So now we're not going to receive the arguments still fired. So we put the arguments. And now what we can do is to receive it here. Let's just do a, b, one, a. First thing, let's just say it that it's add event. And it's just going to return the sum of them, a plus b. First, you'll get an error in the console that you cannot add A and B because any is not supported and by default A and B is any. So we have to assign the type for them. We're going to say that A is a number and B is a number. Right? Now we're not getting error and we're going to replace here A with 2. We're just going to print the sum 1 plus 2 is 3. What if we're going to put the wrong argument like A? What's going to happen? we get an error and we could prevent it directly here. But you see for now that it's not giving us any info that we made a mistake and put like string. The event doesn't even know that we have to put like A, B numbers. So that means that we can just 
put any amount of arguments. That's not what we're looking for. And we're using TypeScript to provide additional safety. So let's correct it. So first, we're going to see that bindable event has a generic. T extends callback. That means that we have to provide callback with defined arguments like what type of each argument should be. And then it's going to type check. So let's do it. We're going to say that it's bindable event. By default, it's callback that takes any amount of arguments and returns anything. So it could be any function. But we could say that this function should accept first argument as a number and another argument as a number as well. And since it's a function, it has to have a return type. So now we get in here an error. You see, expected two arguments, but got one. So now we're going to add the second argument and we're going to see that it's working. Three, see it perfectly. What if we're going to put the string here? No, doesn't work. TypeScript prevents us from doing this. What if we're going to say that here B is the string? Yeah, you see, function is not compatible anymore. So the function should have the same types defined in the bindable event. But since this bindable event is defined, we use generic already, we could just remove the types from here and these variables are not going to be by type any. It's just going to infer the types from here. And let's try adding another argument. You already see that it's not assignable since C doesn't exist here. So we're getting massive improvement in type safety. Let's just test it once again. Perfectly working. We can, of course, try it with normal function on event. Here we have already to define the types because the function itself doesn't know what it deals with. We're going just to steal that line and put it here and connect to that function on event. Again, works. Then we're going back and we're going to tell that B is a string. Oh, again, doesn't work. TypeScript prevents us from doing it. Okay, since we reviewed the bindable events, we're going to... Actually, let's look at another thing. In Lua, you know that you are able to pass like arguments with three dots. In TypeScript, you're going to meet an error. The problem with that is that you have to add the name to the three dots and you have to say what it is. So we're telling that arguments are unknown. It doesn't yell at us because it's still compatible since we can put two numbers in unknown array. And now let's bring the arguments. So if we're going to print the name of it, it's automatically going to convert to the table. In Lua, it's something going to be like data, table, and three dots inside. In TypeScript, you define that right in the function. So let's print arguments. So we got all of them. But what if we want to do analog in Lua, like print these three dots? what we're going to do in this case. In that case, we're just going to write these three dots here. It's like the structuring of that array. And let's see, instead of array, now we're getting simply numbers. And we can as well check how it compiles all the time. Like we're taking three dots, we're putting that in a table and we unpacking it. I think the compiled code is not that complicated as you think, and it's quite easy to debug. You just have to read the names, whatever you did, like event, fire, because it's like the same thing as you did here. You created function, event, connect, and you fired. And as well, the TypeScript unfortunately doesn't put the types inside of the Lua. So if you may, if you want to make some kind of package for Lua people while using TypeScript, you have to de define the types yourself. All right, let's go next. Next one is a remote event, more interesting one. For that, let's create a file called events. It's created actually with a big letter and it's going to be a namespace. It's a rename to events. And for that, we're going to create the utilities, utils. The function is going to be called define event. I am going to explain in a minute. So default function that is going to be this event that is a name string and parent 
that is going to be instance. A thing when we dealing with client and server and we want to create like events not via studio by hand we can like create it by code so we have to create it on the server and on the client what we have to do is just wait for child so first thing we have to install is rbxts services that is quite important or you can just do game like get service run service something like this but we're just going to use the services so let's enable the compilation once again we're going to tell if run service is client then we're going to parent wait for child event name and we're going to return it if that's a server we're going to create an event that is going to be a new instance remote event to the parent and we're going to do event name equals event name we're not forgetting this step since the instance looking for event by the name yeah and we're going to return this event and as well one thing we're going to see that it returns instance instead of remote event the reason for that that wait for child always returns instance and it doesn't have like any generic so we have to explicitly cast it sometimes because of that it just collapses to instance so let's say that we waited for child as a remote event. Now we can see that it returns a remote event. Okay, in events, we're going to define one here, test event. It's going to be define event test and parent script. So let's connect on the client. We're going to fire from the server. So events, so test event on client event. We're going to connect again like these bindable events we reviewed. It's going to be an arrow function and we're just going to print received. And on the server, of course, we're going to do task.wait1. We're going to do events, test event, and we're going to fire all clients with arguments like 1a once again. It's compiled, let's start. And on the client, we're getting received. Even we can print what arguments we receive on the client. Let's just do that thing without defining any types. Unknown and I just comma arguments. Like this, let's test. Received 1a. Perfect. Now let's try the same thing as with bindable event uh, to use the generic to put the types of the values that we have to send. Let's go to define event and change something. We're going to add the generic. Uh, probably we can do function, but let's do it in a little bit other way. So extends unknown, array of unknown, and it's going to return the remote event, which is going to be a callback, arguments t, and going to return the void. Perfect. By default, it's still any, right? So now we can tell which arguments we can send. Define event, let's say A is number, B is number. So we have to define that in array since we already told here that it's going to be an array. Otherwise, there is not that much method that you can just put a bunch of different numbers like number string. Now on the server, you see, we already get an error with type checking that A is not a number. Let's just put a number. And let's say that it's a remote sum is going to be A, B, A plus B. We can check already that A, B are numbers automatically because we defined it here. Without this, let's remove just for a second. A is unknown and B is unknown, and we cannot just add two unknowns together. So again, TypeScript holds our back. All right, let's try. A remote sum is three. So everything worked perfectly here. Now, what if you're going to fire from the client to the server? And you're going to encounter one small error. Let's do it first. Fire server, let's say one, 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 two. 
on the server we're going to connect to it on server event connect we're going to get the player a and b and we're going to print a plus b again remote sum first thing we get an error the a b unknown even though we provided the type the reason for that is that if you have a cheater in your game and he has access to like remote events he can send whatever he wants like uh, he can send string string like table table and whatever thing for that we have to manually check the types of these values for that we can use a small macro like type is that's the first type is a number then we're going to return and if not type is is a number then we're going to return so now we disposed of error because we checking that the a is number b is number and type is is a macro for type of a equals 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 the number but in this case just not equal since we have not at the start of if okay now we getting zero errors we play remote sum is three the perfect one thing uh yeah that could be annoying if you're going to use only vanilla remote event uh, because if you have more complex data let's imagine that you have to send i test data with value one that is a number and like value two that is array of strings right you have to check it like manually by hand like you have to take every value you have to check whether it has value one value two whether it test data is even the table and whether each value in the value two is a string you have to check it manually by hand to get this type safety or there is a small hack of course that you can just bypass it all together like constant arc zero equals a as number so again you explicitly just casting it to the type which is not that recommended to be honest so for complex data types and this there's a lot of packages that's just going to solve that thing automatically that means they going even to type check it for you that means that if the player just sends string string it's going to not pass one of the packages is going to be flamework that is like very big package that includes not only networking but a lot more to it so we're going to discuss one day about it and i'm going to show how it works but for now since we looking only at the basics let's just go with the basics for now and in a couple of videos i'm going to show you a couple more packages that are going to speed up the workflow that you're having like with vanilla typescript by a lot and yeah 